Hey everybody, this is Steve with another episode of Keep Em Rolling, and I was trying to think about what to do for today's episode. Uh, yesterday I did the World War I uh, books from the uh, Polar Bear, and I had a person in the comment section ask me how I set up displays in my room. They're trying to do stuff in their room, and we're uh, just curious on some tips and that, and I was typing out a rather lengthy response to them when I thought, what the heck, why not uh, just do a video on how I do displays? So, today's video is on how I do displays. Now, the first thing you have to realize in doing displays is that it's really a very personal thing on setting up a display. For me, I will set up displays and if it really comes out the way I like it, that display stays. If it's something that just doesn't set right, I might tweak that display two, three, four, or more times before I finally get it to where it's pleasing to me. It's almost like that concept of feng shui. Now, that being said, I don't feel that you should permanently set up a display. In other words, if you're going to put something in your room, put it up, you know, keep it up for a while, and then change it after maybe a month or two months or three months. Um, you know, I always do it when I'm like going to dust something. I will take it and, um, you know, take the display down, dust everything, and then put it back up maybe a little bit differently or what have you. I, I say this because it's not real good to leave something permanently up just because light can affect things, a sunlight can affect things, the air can affect things. So sometimes it's nice to give uh, an item a chance to rest, if you will. So I might have a uniform on a mannequin for a while and then I will simply just take it down and put it away. Let it rest, if you will. So on that note, let us get into doing the displays here. Now, first of all, I gotta share with you one of my new finds right here. I have my Pickle Rick Pringle can. I saw these on sale and I'm like, I've got to get myself a Pickle Rick. I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. You can see I have my my Rick bobblehead back here. So, and on a side note, I actually dressed up as Rick for C2E2, which is a comic convention that takes place in Chicago. And there's a really funny side story to that, but I'll share that with all of you later. So on to displays. Now I have some things I've set up out here that can be used in displays. So a couple of big tips for you. Right off the bat, realize that in doing a display, it can be as expensive or as cheap as you would like it to be. Um, there are very uh, great museum catalogs. Gaylord Brothers is one, G-A-Y-L-O-R-D Brothers. They sell a lot of like library supply and um, museum supply type of stuff. And you can find really cool exhibit stuff in there, but it is pricey. We're talking display cabinets that can run into the two, three, four thousand dollar range. But let me take you over here because I'll show you uh, something that they do have. So walk with me over here. We'll turn on the light. One of the things, if you look back here, kind of in the back, you can see this uh, plastic stand. It's an acrylic stand. They have things like that. And they serve a great purpose because they help to elevate your collection. The problem is that they do cost money. Now, this is going to bring me to one of my first kind of tips, and that is when setting up a display, I like to do what I call the three level, okay? And the three level is where you do bigger stuff kind of up high in the back, then you do stuff in the middle, and then you do stuff down here in the front. And I, I did have something here in the front on display, but I brought it over to my desk because I was going to show you how to set up a display. So, But this way, your eye follows it. You follow, you go to the big stuff, the middle stuff, and then to the small stuff in the front. And it makes sense, too, because you don't want to have small stuff in the back where you can't see it. You know, you don't want to have big imposing stuff here in the front because, look at that, I mean, that's just, it's in the way. So that kind of small, medium, and large is a great tip, okay? As far as these stands go, be creative. You can buy these stands. I like the clear ones because they allow you to put things around them. So for example, uh, I can have things inside of here on display as well, and you can see through and it lets the light filter through. This is why I like using glass heads with my hats because the focus should be on the hat, not on the head. 
the head should just kind of blend into the background to allow you to focus on the beauty of the hat. So that's why I like using these. And I had pointed this out before. These used to be available through Pier 1 Imports at $20 each. They unfortunately don't carry them anymore. I've been trying to find another supplier, but everywhere I go, they're asking $40, $50 for these darn things. So keep your eyes peeled on the secondary market. A lot of display material can be found through the secondary market. And we'll come back to that in a bit. So let's go back over to the desk here so we can talk about setting up displays. As I said, setting up a display is really a personal choice. One of my big things for displays is I feel it's important to group like things together, okay? And by grouping like things, what I mean by that is you can have like things that are a grouping belonging to one individual uh, soldier, sailor, marine, whack, et cetera, et cetera. So you can have their personal items. I have, I have a grouping right here uh, on top of the Victrola. This white uniform belongs to one person. Same thing with this one right here. So you can group things like this together. That tells a great story, okay? You can group like items together. For instance, if you have a huge helmet collection, like John Boy 09, that huge helmet collection, that's a great display. You can group all of your helmets together or all of your visor caps together. Um, you can focus on the war. So uh, I, I can have all my World War I helmets together, my World War II helmets together, all my Korea, Vietnam, etc. Or you can just have helmets, okay? Uh, the thing is you want it to tell a story. Okay, so it's it, what I refer to this as is it's the flea market way of displaying is and that's what you don't want to do and i see that quite a bit where someone says i'm going to set up a display and i'm just going to put everything because i have so many cool things i'm just going to put it all out with no rhyme or reason i'm going to have a vietnam helmet next to a korean war overseas cap next to a world war one navy jumper but it's all cool stuff i want to show off that's great but it's confusing when i look at that i'm i'm trying to what is it telling me? You know, when I look at this, I know this is one person's stuff. Or this is one person's stuff. When I look at my World War I, it is grouped together. For example, I have my World War I gas mask on the helmet. It's displayed. It's three-dimensional. It's in the back because it's larger. And then next to it, I have my World War I postcard with the gas mask featured. And I have the World War I anti-dimming stick for the gas mask. It makes sense. What would make this odd is if I had the World War I gas mask, a World War II or Vietnam helmet, and then had a postcard maybe from the 80s and something from the Navy. You know, it just, it wouldn't, it's cool stuff, but it doesn't tell the story. So keep that in mind. Keep like groupings together. Now, I mentioned those stands and how much they cost, you know, those, I didn't give you the price, but you know, they can run 20, 30, $40 per item. So what can you do to make your own three-dimensional type of backdrop stand? One thing I like to do is I like to use books, okay? Books are very inexpensive. If you go to library book sales, used bookstores, a lot of times you can find old books that look really cool and run you, you know, 50 cents, 25 cents each. And then you just simply stack them up on each other until you get a high enough kind of lift to put your display on. What's really cool is if you can use books that are part of what you are displaying. So for instance, uh, these are World War One. okay? So I'm gonna do a World War One display. I have my World War One book stacked up here, and then I have something, World War One. let's, okay, here's a World War One cap device. I have these displayed on the books, okay? It's kind of a cool, cool way of displaying. Uh, you don't have to use vintage books. You can use modern. If you've got five or six really nice modern books on World War II, stack them up if you don't read them on a regular basis and put your display on top. Now, if you have books that you don't find very attractive, and this is why I like using kind of the older books because they just have that kind of old look to them. If you have books that aren't attractive and you're like, gosh, I'd love to use them, but they just don't look right, wrap them in cloth. Make your stack. And then do cloth over them. I didn't have a piece of cloth to show you what I mean, but you can wrap them in cloth, and that gives you a really nice riser, if you will. 
I've even gone as far as to see uh, people who have actually used wrapping paper or brown, uh, uh, the brown kind of like almost like paper sack type paper, wrapping the books up and using them as a backdrop. Very, very inexpensive. Now, you can get even cheaper. Look for scrap wood. A couple nice pieces of scrap wood, get a saw out, cut them down to the size that you want, stack them up, wrap them, paint them, you know, a quick uh, coat of like a uh, flat black or whatever, and that gives you a nice rise. Now, very important though, if you're going to paint the wood or if you're going to use wood, be careful because sometimes the it, wood tends to react with certain items. So if you're using wood that's just kind of a raw wood and you're putting something on like leather or what have you, it can cause problems. So be careful about that. Another thing is if you're using wood that is treated lumber, that can be a problem reacting with things. And if you paint the item, that can also be a problem because that paint can leach out. So if you're going to paint something, I suggest painting it, letting it sit for a while, and then maybe coating it with like a clear coat of varnish, letting that sit, and then that will give you a nice, a nice backdrop, if you will. I'm sorry, a nice, nice riser. I uh, just kind of funky things from secondhand stores. Don't be afraid to look at your Goodwills, at your St. Vincent de Paul's, at your secondhand kind of junky shops. Look in the kitchen section, look in the household goods section, and you will find things that you can start using. I see these things all the time, these stands. You can buy them new at your local craft shop like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, you can find them usually at your uh, kind of secondhand stores, if you will, for nothing. I think at the Hobby Lobby, they run like three bucks, four bucks. These are great for giving a backdrop for things. So let's say I want to do my World War I display and see how behind here it's kind of cluttered. It doesn't look real good. I want to, I want to really focus on the World War I. Well, just find yourself, you know, I, I found this book at a library book sale for like 50 cents, okay? It's just a kind of picture history of World War I, nothing ex special, nothing extremely valuable. Uh, but what a fantastic backdrop, okay? I could even go as far as taking a page out of this book, laminating it, and using that as a backdrop. I don't encourage you to laminate anything unless it's something you're willing to throw away okay laminate can fail miserably i've seen it happen so do not laminate valuable stuff but something out of a book like this where it's not worth anything or i've seen people do newspapers where they take a newspaper uh, from the time period it's not worth anything they cut out the article they want they laminate it so it gives it that kind of rigidity so it'll stand up and they use that as a backdrop it's a really cool way and then see i've got my books here in front and now i can put let's bring that hat badge back down there you go makings of a display let's do a couple other here uh we have let me move the world war one books out of the way for a moment so i don't ruin them oh i should show you that was kind of a cool one i had that out yesterday when i was doing my research I found that one here not too long ago. Great original book on Archangel, uh, the 339th Polar Bears. So I was so happy to get that. Anyways, back to the display. All right. We've got some wings here. Not a big collector of wings, just because I have fallen into many a trap with these, but we've got some wings here. So what kind of display can we do? Well, you can have them sitting out like that. All right. Not really attractive but they're grouped together we have the navigator wings here we have a, a gunner wing there kind of cool but oh wait what do i have here i have an aviation first aid kit that would be affixed to the uh, bulkhead of the aircraft okay so look at that it says kit first aid aeronautic that's really nice i could have that up and then have my wings out here in the front. Well, there you go. It's kind of a cool story. Now, maybe I get rid of these wings and just have the navigator wings, you know? How cool is that? But, gee, I found at the military show for nothing, it was like $2 in one somebody's uh, kind of miscellaneous junk box, this really neat Army Air Force uh, sweetheart uh, silk um, handkerchief. You know, you see that sitting in the box by itself, and you're like, why would I collect that? I mean, it's kind of cool, but 
What am I ever gonna do with it? Well, bring it in, and now it adds some color and depth to your display. And you find these things, I mean, I got a pile of them here. I've got some that are navy, I've got some that are just red, white, and blue fringed, okay? I mean, even these, like, okay, this one here, like, ah, I don't really like that pink, a little too much. I'll put that away. Bring out one that's nice red, white, and blue. And look at that. Got a really cool kind of, like, underlayment, an under cushion for the wings. Now, we talked about the navy. I have next to me here, little Riker mount. That's that box. That's kind of the official name, Riker mount. These darn things are everywhere, and they are cheap as chips. If you find them at the military shows, you can make pick them up for a buck or two a box, okay? Now, they come with the box, which is kind of a cardboard. It's got glass, which I like because glass, everybody, is an inert material. It will not react with the items that are underneath it, okay? And then it usually has a foam piece inside to give it that uh, cushion. The foam piece is really, really bad all right be very careful with that foam piece it can just destroy military artifacts so what i do is cheap piece of felt at the local hobby lobby michaels joanne fabrics etc you can go to their remnant section find a piece of felt put the piece of felt in there you go got a beautiful uh, uh underlayment for that creates a nice little display and then once again Let's see, we've got handkerchief here that uh, says greetings from San Diego. We've got one here, look at that. Mother, United States Navy, you know, lay them out and you have this really cool kind of display. This is the stuff that I love. And you can even take it one step further. You have an old junk uniform. You know, we tend to look at some things like, gosh, you know, I bought a Navy uniform and it came with a pair of pants and the pants were just destroyed, moth-eaten, ripped up, shredded pants. I can never display them. They're horrible. Well, keep the pants. Take the pants. Make sure you get all the bugs out of them. You know, you can use the freezer method where you put them in the freezer for 24 hours, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure they're clean, but then cut them up cut the material up and you can make inserts for Riker mounts. So you have an actual pair of, for instance, uh, uh, dark blue uh, uh, dungaree material for your backdrop for your Navy insignia. Okay. Keep that stuff in mind for doing the displays. Now I can go on all day about displays. Uh, I'm going to touch on just a few more simple concepts. One of them is signage. Okay. And in looking for your display material, as I said earlier, check out secondhand shops, check out uh, uh, stores that are going out of business. Uh, the Sears near us, Sears and Roebuck, uh, actually closed its doors, which was pretty sad. But you go to their big liquidation sale, and a lot of times all of their signage material and that is also available for sale, and sometimes very, very cheap. You can find torsos. For some reason at those sales, the mannequins are always so expensive. And be careful buying the mannequins just because they're oftentimes for like big people and your uniforms are for much smaller people. So it can be very, you know, you can go buy a couple mannequins and think, yeah, I just scored, get home and realize that not one of your uniforms fits on a mannequin that you purchased. So uh, if you're going to go to something like that, take one with you. I went to one and I took a coat that was kind of that middle representation of sizes in my collection and it fit on not one mannequin. So I was glad I, I took it along. But you can find things like this. It's just a nice metal frame sign. A couple bucks at one of those sales. All I did was I used Microsoft Word. Very simple. Went on the computer, typed up the uh, sign, made sure it would fit printed it out. Uh, I did a couple uh, printouts on just regular good old uh, white um, printer paper, you know, made sure they fit and how they, you know, how I wanted it. I went and bought some nice uh, kind of heavier stock paper at the local craft shop. Not very much money. You can get like maybe 100 sheets, 200 sheets for, you know, five bucks, whatever. And then printed off the sign and cut it out. There you go very professional looking sign. Signage is one of those things I think you should do in a 
collection with a display, even if it's just small ones that aren't in necessarily uh, these fancier frames, you know, have those out and they, they just make it look that much cooler. Okay. Um, something to keep in mind though, when you do go to these hobby shops, check online before you go. And I know this is going to sound really geeky of me. If you're going to the fabric shop, if you're going to the craft shop, go online, see what coupons are available. I'm actually a frequent flyer at um, my Michaels. So when I go in, they ask for my number, I give them my number and I have gotten incredible deals where it's like, oh, hey, yeah, today's a 50% special coupon day for members. It doesn't cost you anything to be a member. Wow. Okay. I just, you know, got all my stuff for 50% or, hey, it's one item for 50% check out the coupons before you go. It's amazing the stuff that you can find. And they have display cases, they have a lot of other things. So that's some of the ideas for doing the displays. Um, as far as cases and such go, keep a lookout everywhere you go. Garage sales, flea markets, estate sales. You never know what kind of case is going to come your way. Um, these, I should point out these metal cases, this big tall one here, it's kind of blending in. I don't have all my lights on for this, so sorry. Uh, that one was at a garage sale. Cheapest chips, I think it was $15 and they had put a new lock system in it, which was incredible. Uh, this little case was at an antique shop. Um, the person was getting out of the antique business. They had that little case. And once again, it wasn't that much money. Um, Ikea is where I found this case. Okay. So like things, look around, group things together. The most important thing though, out of all of this, the absolute most important thing is, let me flip this around instead of talking to my hand. There we go. The most important thing, and I cannot stress this enough, is to have fun. As I said, I can go on all day. We can talk about hanging things on the walls. Um, you know, they have so many cool things with command hooks now that will not ruin your walls and will allow you to, to readjust things. There are just so many fun things you can do from decorating huge spaces down to just a small drawer. I've seen some incredible displays in a drawer where the person literally took a drawer in a dresser. And this is something for those of you who don't have, I know I was going to end it and this just it reminded me, um, Pinterest is a great place to go to go on Pinterest and look up displays and you'll see amazing things. But, uh, one person I knew they took an old chest of drawers that they had sitting in the basement that was just doing nothing. And they took each drawer, they lined the drawers, um, with different colored material. They then, um, took and put little, uh, like, sorry, right there little pieces of wood in each of the four corners of the drawer to act as supports. And then they had plexiglass cut so it would actually fit in the drawer and rest on top of those supports. So it gave it kind of a cover, if you will. And they decorated the dresser. So four drawers, they created this really cool display case. So closed, it looked just like a dresser. Open, you could open the drawers and look inside and here's these displays. And let me tell you, the displays were awesome. They were actually uh, uh, Revolutionary War era flintlock uh, pistols, Civil War era pistols and the like. And it was really just a neat way to see that. So it was concealed. So if someone broke into their house, it's just a crummy chest of drawers in the basement. But when you open the drawer, wow, look at that. I mean, it, it was just absolutely amazing. I hope I'm looking at the right side. I can't tell. <laughs> so... This is my video on displays. If I have any other ideas, I will put them in the comment section and so forth and so on. Uh, as I said, I could go on all day about how to do these, but it all comes down to have fun and, and just enjoy what you're doing. If you're happy with it, that's all that matters. So everybody, this is Steve with another episode of Keep Em Rolling. And as I stated earlier, I'm going to try and do one a day as long as I can until uh, uh, this whole self-quarantine thing, or not self-quarantine, but this whole uh, kind of stay-at-home thing is, is over with. We'll see how far I get. So uh, wish me luck. <laughs> all right, everybody, on that note, this is Steve with Keep Em Rolling, reminding all of you to, well, keep them rolling. <laughs>